What's up guys? Once you've kind of tackled the basic idea of how to set up and how to apply synthetic division, it's time to work on some problems where students start to make mistakes. And in these three examples, that's exactly what I want to do. Start to explore some of those problems that are not very easy, but overcomplicated, but definitely something that you should expect to see on a test, a quiz, on your homework, and also are very common for students making mistakes. Actually, funny fact, this is actually the second time I recorded this video because I made some of the mistakes when I first recorded this video that I'm telling you not to do. So you got to be very careful. Let's go and get into the first example. So in this case, again, we have a polynomial divided by another polynomial. Again, notice that my divisor is linear, so therefore I know I can use synthetic division. Now, one of the things that students love to do for synthetic division is just go ahead and use the opposite value to find their K with synthetic division. But again, you can see in this case, that is not what you're going to want to do. What I always like to tell my students to do is always take your denominator and go ahead and set it equal to zero. Then you need to go ahead and solve for X. And that is going to give you your value K that you're going to use for synthetic division. So now that you have your K, if you remember synthetic division, what you're going to do is you're going to put that on the outside of your synthetic division box. And then on the inside, you're going to go ahead and take a look at your coefficients. You're going to take the coefficients of the polynomial in the numerator. Now it's very important when you're looking for the coefficients of the numerator to make sure that you have every single term. So you can see in this case, I have four, three, two, I can put a little one here and then I have my constant. So I have no missing terms. If I did have a missing term, then I need to make sure I use zero as a placeholder. And if I didn't have a number in front of my coefficient, then I'd use the number one. But in this case, we're all set. So I'm going to go and set up the synthetic division problem. Just remember to keep your negative signs, right? If it's a positive three, then make sure it's positive. If it's a negative five, make sure it's negative. Now, just remember for the synthetic division algorithm, the first term is always going to be the freebie, right? Thank you. Price is right. Come on. So that one comes down and we get a three right here. Now what I'm going to do is remember, multiply on the diagonal, add on the vertical. Whenever I multiply, I'm going to use that product over to the next column. Now for my first product, I have to multiply two thirds times three. Now, sometimes students will get confused or, or they'll make a mental mistake. Even though synthetic division can be done faster, sometimes just slow down, like rewrite. What is a two thirds times one? Remember, we can always rewrite that as a three over one. You say, oh, the threes are going to divide out. That's just leaving me with a two over one, which is two. And I'm going to go and put that in the next column. Now in negative five plus two, remember we're adding on the vertical. Negative five plus two is going to be a negative three. Now again, I'm going to multiply my diagonal. And again, hopefully you see that the threes would divide out, except this is a negative three. So now it's going to give me a negative two. Two plus negative two is going to be a zero. Zero times anything, multiplying the diagonal is just going to be a zero. Three times zero, three plus zero, I'm sorry, is going to be a three. And then three times two thirds is again going to be my same answer here. And that's going to be a two. Negative two plus two is going to be a zero. Now remember, synthetic division is just a tool. This is not the answer. What we need to do now is go ahead and convert this into our quotient. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just kind of list how do these answers relate to my polynomial. And remember, we always start at the end. That is going to be our remainder. Now, since our remainder is zero, this is very important in just understanding division. That tells us that three X minus two evenly divides into this polynomial. So the last term is always your remainder. Then it goes constant, linear, quadratic, and then cubic. However, this is still not the answer because it's very important for us to understand in a problem like this, there's a coefficient of my linear term. That's going to change the answer of the quotient. And what I mean by that is just take a quick look into long division to see what that first term would be. Now I'm not going to do the whole long division problem, but I want you to understand if I was to do this in long division, the first thing I do is to say, how many times does three X divide into three X to the fourth? And that's just going to be a X cubed times. So therefore three is not the coefficient of X cubed. It's actually three. Basically the trick that you're going to want to do is whatever the coefficient coefficient is of your linear term, that's what you're going to divide each and every one of your terms from synthetic division. So therefore my true answer is actually going to be a one, negative three, zero, one, and then zero. We don't really care about the remainder, but now these are actually going to be the true coefficients of my quotient. And therefore I can write my final answer as a X cubed minus a three X squared. I don't need to write zero X, right? That's just zero. So I'm just going to leave that out and then plus three. And then again, there is a remainder of zero. So I'm going to leave that out. And that is going to be my final answer, also known as my quotient. All right, so now let's go and look at this next example. Now in this next example, you can see, again, I have the same issue, right? So again, we don't want to use our K to be negative one, right? What we want to do is set our denominator equal to zero and go and solve. Now, hopefully you can do this in your head, right? Minus one divided by two. Therefore, X is going to equal a negative one half. Now, if you can't do it, then just do a little sidebar and do it yourself. You got this. All right, so I set the negative one half on the outside of my synthetic division. And now what I need to do is go ahead and take my coefficients. Now, there's a couple of things that I immediately noticed. And again, a very common mistake. If students don't make a mistake with their K, if they don't set it equal to zero and actually solve, the next biggest mistake that students will make is they'll go ahead and they'll forget about the place values. Notice on this example, I went four, three, two, one, constant. 
That should be the case for all problems. In this case, I do not have a three. I do not have an X cubed. So therefore the coefficient of X cubed is still there. It's just actually a zero. So we just need to make sure when we're doing synthetic division to include that zero as your placeholder. It's also important to recognize that this X here does not have a number. So therefore I'm going to put a little one there just to remind you that one times X is still just going to be X. But again, we need to make sure we're writing down all the coefficients for each and one of our terms. And again, if we don't have the term to use the placeholder. So now we have our correct K, which is going to be a negative one half because we set the denominator equal zero and we have the correct coefficients because we used our placeholder. So again, now we're just going to go ahead and follow our synthetic division algorithm. So again, remember the first term is always going to be the freebie. Thank you. Price is right. And therefore that's going to be an eight. Now again, eight times negative one half, you can do this in your head, but again, like if you can't do it in your head, like that's okay. Like just write it down by the side. Right. And just notice, oh, the two goes into eight, four times, times a negative one. So therefore that's going to be a negative four, then zero plus negative four, because we add on the vertical is going to be a negative four. Now, again, we can do this multiplication over here. So negative one half times a negative four. Again, the two is going to divide into the negative two, negative two times, negative times a negative is going to be a positive. So therefore that is going to be a positive two. Add on the vertical, negative four plus two is going to be a negative two. And again, you can multiply this over here on the side. You don't need to show your work, but I'm just kind of doing it. So seeing like if you can't do it in your head or if you co make common mistakes like myself, then just go ahead and write it down and like slow down. So again, the negative times negative is going to be a positive and therefore this is going to give me a positive one. One plus one is going to be a two and a two times negative one half is going to be a negative one. And then four plus negative one is going to give me a three. Okay. Now we got this answer, but again, remember we have to go ahead and divide our coefficient. We don't need to worry about our remainder, but we do need to divide each and every one of these terms by two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything here by two, but now I'm going to get the true coefficients of my quotient, which is going to be a four, negative two, negative one, one, and three. And now what I want to do is just go ahead and list these as how these would write for the quotient. Remember the last number is always the remainder. So again, in this case, we have a remainder that tells us that two X plus one does not evenly divide into our numerator. That's okay. We'll just have to do one more special thing at the end. The one is going to be my constant. This is going to be the coefficient of my linear term the coefficient of my quadratic term and the coefficient of my cubic term. And now again, you can see that, oh, it's four X cubed, which again makes sense, right? If you were to do long division here, two X divides into eight X to the fourth, four X cubed times, right? It doesn't go in there eight times. So again, you just have to be aware that synthetic division is a tool. You're not actually doing division like you would with long division. Now I can just go ahead and write my final answer. And when I'm writing my final answer, it's just very important that I go ahead and rewrite each and every one of these terms. I don't need to write the one in front of the X, but now what I do is I go ahead and write my remainder over my divisor. So three is going to be over a two X plus one. All right. And there you go. Now this last example, you might look at this and say, Ooh, I don't have to worry about any fractions in the denominator. Ah, oh, thank you. It wasn't that bad though, was it guys? Come on. But this problem does have its own issues. And you can see here when I try to like list everything out, I go five, three, one. Uh oh, I have a lot of missing terms, right? So you got to make sure you're very careful. I need to apply these place values. Now, one other tip that I do, if you don't want to make mistakes, like I already tried to do before and forget about my place values. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll go ahead and rewrite my numerator with my place values. So what I mean by is like X to the fourth is still there. It just has a coefficient of zero. So what you can do is you can go and rewrite this as an X to the fifth plus a zero X to the fourth minus a seven X cubed plus a zero X squared plus an X plus one. Okay. Because one thing you always want to do when you're doing synthetic division, you got to make sure you have everything in descending order five, four, three, two, one, and then your constant. If you don't have that, then you did something wrong. The other thing, just to remember, it doesn't matter if there's a number in front of the X, but you can only have your X raised to the first power, right? It has to be linear. Now we could set the X plus three equal to zero and solve, but I think you would agree with me that our K in this example is going to be a negative three. And now when I want to go and list my coefficients, you can see it's relatively easy. Like it was a little bit of work to go ahead and rewrite it all, but now I can just go and take my one, right? Because if there's no number listed there, remember it's a one, zero, negative seven, zero, again, another one, and then one. And the nice thing about this problem too, as well as since we don't have a coefficient of my linear term, I don't have to worry about dividing out that answer at the end. So now let's go and follow this synthetic division algorithm. So again, bring down the first number, that's going to be a one. And then we multiply on the diagonal add on the vertical. So one times negative three is negative three that moves over to the next column right there. Zero plus negative three is a negative three. Negative three times negative three is going to be a positive nine. Negative seven plus nine is going to be a positive two. Two times negative three is going to be a negative six. Zero plus negative six is going to be a negative six. Negative six times negative three is going to be a positive 18. One plus 18 is going to be a 19. And 19 times negative three is going to be 19, negative 38. That's going to be a negative 
57. And then one plus negative 57 is going to be a negative 56. Remember our last term is always our, going to be our remainder. So that's going to be a remainder constant linear, quadratic, cubic, and quartic. And again, if I was just doing a really, really big synthetic division problem, you just keep on going up and up with higher values for your X. But again, remember these represent all the coefficients. So therefore I have X to the fourth minus a three X cubed plus a two X squared minus a six X plus 19. Now in this case, you could write plus a negative 56 over an X plus three, or you could just write a negative 56 over a X plus three. Either way, it's gonna work out exactly the same. So if you think these three examples were not too bad, well then go ahead and check out my next video where I work on more difficult examples using only synthetic division. If you want more examples of doing synthetic division or to take a look at the notes and extra resources I provided inside of my courses and classroom, then go ahead and check out that information down below in the description. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Cheers.